today we shatter the beliefs of more than 90% of people that believe in God. Today's the day, baby. I shouldn't say we shatter their beliefs, we just, we correct their beliefs. <laughs> and for the record, I'm not anti-God. I actually believe and know there is a God. So this lesson is going to make sense of God. And why am I doing this? Because so many of my friends recently have left their faith, their church, their whatever. They've stopped believing in God. And the way I see it, if I had or held these beliefs that 90% of people that believe in God hold, I would stop believing in God as well. So once we correct it and we look at God correctly, the way that he actually is, we'll be able to keep our faith and make sense of things and logically believe in God and hold on to the faith that we have. Let's dig in. So today we're going to talk about ontological frameworks, which I know if you hear that, you're probably thinking like, Phew, that's going way over my head. I don't even want to make sense of this. But ontological frameworks is actually a really easy concept. It's basically the setting of something that you're referring to. So the ontological framework of a snowboarder, for example, is the mountain, the snow, um, where they're snowboarding. Like that is the snowboarder's ontological framework. The ontological framework of a golfer would be a golf course, the land. Uh, they're out there on their golf cart. It, it's basically the setting. That's where a golfer goes. And the ontological framework of a kayaker, for example, would be the, if you said river, then you're right. So ontological frameworks are, are just basically the setting where something takes place. So we're going to look at these three potential ontological frameworks that religion teaches and break them down and see which one actually works. One of them does actually work. So here on our whiteboard, we have three symbols that we're gonna be putting down. The squares represent the universe or everything that we know of. Like everything that fits into what we know is considered our universe. So I'm not just talking about like our galaxy or whatever, I'm, I'm considering everything that fits into our universe. So, in the first box, we have Christianity. This is what most religion teaches. Here in the middle, we'll put, and here on the end, we'll have we have Eastern mysticism. So like Buddha. So first we'll break down where each of these puts man and God, and then we'll talk about the problems with those placements. Christianity, for the most part, like 99% of Christianity, puts man here in the universe. So we exist, we're real. Where do you think they put God? Or in other words, God created reality. In Greek mythology, man, again, is here in the universe, and God is actually also here in the universe. Or in other words, there's reality that exists first, and then there's God who exists within reality alongside us. And the final ontological framework, Eastern mysticism, places man in the box, like normal, in the universe, 
and God actually is the box. Now we'll teach about the goals of each of these ontological frameworks. So with the first ontological framework, the goal of man is to get outside the box. So the overall goal with the first box is to transcend it or leave the box, leave reality after we die, go be with God out in the, you know, the blob of nothingness that we referred to earlier. With Greek mythology, the goal of man is to, to get along with the box. In other words, we're always going to be in the box. We just learn how to better get along with the box or abide and abound. And finally, with the last framework, the goal of man is to... become one with the box. Now here's where it gets good. Here's where all of those other lessons leading up to this point come in handy. If you haven't pulled them up, go watch them. So now we're gonna take everything from those lessons and apply it to these three ontological frameworks and see which of them still makes sense. So first big red flag with the majority of Christianity is that this framework puts God over reality. And that is like putting your shoes on before your socks. And that's backwards. Here's a couple of reasons why. So if God created the box, that means he created everything inside the box as well, which would also mean that he created evil. And anyone that creates something evil is therefore evil. But God isn't evil. And if God created the universe and everything in it, why would he make it so that he has to sacrifice his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to, for us to be saved? Why didn't he just make it so we could all be saved in the first place? Another main problem with that first ontological framework is that it's then saying that God created something out of nothing. And you can't do that. That would break the identity axiom that we talked about in the last lesson. So everything has to be created from something that already exists. So to me, this first framework is completely wrong. So the next time you see your church leader, ask them if God created reality. And if he says yes, he or she says yes, then ask them why God created evil. He didn't. I've had too many friends ditch their belief in God because they think God couldn't have created such evil that exists in the world today. And the truth is, he didn't. So if you believe that God created the universe, reality, everything that we know exists, then I wouldn't believe in God either. I'd be an atheist because I would think, how could God create such evil? But he didn't. So... Evil exists within reality, and God has to work with evil. All right, so now talking about Eastern mysticism. With Eastern mysticism, the goal of man is to lose oneself or, and become one with the box. The problem with that is that then you have no identity. Poof, you lose all self-identity. Another term for this might be extreme oblivion, or in other words, nirvana. I also believe in yin-yangs, which allow for contradictions in reality. It all meshes together. But as we talked about in the last lesson, you can't have contradictions in reality. So because this last one, Eastern mysticism, loses all sense of identity, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't want to lose who I am. 
<laughs> I am who I am for a reason, and I feel like we came to this earth for a reason, to become someone, to learn things, etc. So let's talk about why this middle ontology of God actually makes sense. With the middle ontology, God didn't create evil. Anytime there is good, there is also going to be evil. That makes sense still, right? So if God didn't create reality but is within reality, he had to also come up with a way to overcome the evil, therefore also having his son Jesus Christ overcome that for us. So am I a Greek mythologist? Well, not quite. But there is one more religion that teaches that God is indeed inside the box and that the goal of man is to get along with the box. And sadly, here's where I'm gonna lose some of you. Mormonism. Does that mean that I believe everything about Mormonism? Well, we'll find out as we go. But as far as ontological frameworks go, Mormonism has my vote. And with that, we've now eliminated 95, 99, percent of religions out there as far as logical thinking goes. And this has been a really long lesson, so until next time, keep it logical.